and we are called to try and put flesh on those bones as if we were present in some way at that time unknown to Mary herself. The story is like a little drama. It opens with a short introduction about the sending of the angel by God and closes with his very rapid departure. In between, there are three brief acts to the drama. I would like to thank and congratulate the actors and the producers and directors that simple drama which we watched during the prayer of the rosary this morning. Congratulations and thank you. The angel opens the dialogue by greeting Mary with those words so familiar, perhaps too familiar to us. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Hail. It's an expression of honor. Another translation puts it, rejoice. Most highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Luke tells us that Mary was disturbed by the greeting and asked herself, what could these words mean? Rejoice, O highly favored, the Lord is with you. Question, did Mary know at her age of 17, that she was born without any stain of sin? Did she ever guess that there was something special about her? We don't know. All we know is that when the angel greeted her in this way, she pondered, what have I done to deserve such an exceptional greeting. Have you ever had a similar experience, experience of being told, you know, there is nobody like you in the whole world, you're special, Amal Murum. How would you react? I can tell you my first reaction would be my brother, what's coming next? But please, let me have everything immediately and don't be keeping me in suspense. Mary ponders. It's a particular gift of her character. We come across it in two other situations in the infancy stories of St. Luke. When the shepherds came to Bethlehem to tell Mary about the words of the angel. I bring you news of a great joy. A savior has been born to you this day. Luke tells us she treasured all these things in her heart. Again, after the finding in the temple, a rather unpleasant incident took, took place between a boy who was 12 years of age and his mother. His mother, we are told, simply stored up all these things in her heart. Today, we might say, on each occasion, including the greeting of the angel, Mary was left speechless. She was left speechless, both perturbed and perplexed in the presence of something unbelievable. Following on the greeting, the angel then comes along with the heart of the matter, the message. As Mary is still trying to come to terms 
with the greeting of this heavenly creature, the angel says, you are to conceive and give birth to a son. He will be called the Son of the Most High and of his kingdom there will be no end. A child whose kingdom will have no end. With this extraordinary news, Mary steps in and calls a halt to the proceedings with an, ans an answer that is quite abrupt, quite brief, and quite short. I want to know clearly what's going on here, you might say in colloquial, colloquial language. This is how she replies to the angel, how can this be, I am a virgin, I have no husband. In fact, Mary was betrothed to Joseph at the time, but according to Jewish law, they were actually married, but they had not yet begun to live together. Finally, Act 3. Gabriel confirms that motherhood would not come about in the normal way with Joseph. Instead, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be called Son of God. The angel continues what we would call the final punchline. Your cousin Elizabeth in her old age is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. Mary gives her response and it's an unambiguous yes. I am the handmaid of the Lord let it be done to me according to your word. It's hard to believe that Mary simply gave that yes immediately after the angel had put in all his points. In the Lucan nar narrative, there is no his hint of any kind to suggest that Mary took a little time out to ponder this momentous decision. There is no mention that the angel might have said to her, Mary, go away and think about it. I give you 48 hours to make up your mind and I will be back here for your answer at this time on Saturday. It is believed that Mary was only about 17 years of age when God sent his angel on this extraordinary task. With that response of Mary, Luke concludes the whole story with the words, the angel left her. It's the last sentence of the 13 verses of the Annunciation story. The angel left her. Apparently, Gabriel makes no delay in the return flight to heaven. Perhaps he does this in case Mary just might change her mind. But now Mary r remains alone wherever she is, at home or some other quiet place. The conversation that took place with the angel was presumably behind cl closed doors. Her whole life will never be the same again. To whom can she turn now in order to share this unbelievable secret? Her parents, Joachim and Anne, to undertake such a commitment to be 
the mother of God's 